truth. The truth matters. Rohingya crisis in Myanmar. False and inflammatory posts on Facebook, often by military personnel, spread hate and incited violence against the Rohingya Muslims minority. This led to widespread violence, resulting in thousands of deaths, mass displacement, and a refugee crisis. Over 700,000 Rohingyas fled to neighboring Bangladesh, facing dire consequences in refugee camps. The United Nations has described the violence as a textbook example of ethnic cleansing. This situation highlights the dangers of unchecked hate speech on social media platforms, especially when propagated by influential figures or groups. The Iraq War and Weapons of Mass Destruction The U.S. government, led by President George W. Bush, and UK government, led by Prime Minister Tony Blair, claimed that Iraq possessed weapons of mass destruction, which were never found. The 2003 invasion led to the toppling of Saddam Hussein regime, but resulted in significant loss of life, prolonged instability, and the emergence of a terrorist group like ISIS. The war cost trillions of dollars and had a lasting impact on regional and global politics. The false weapons of mass destruction claims were later attributed to faulty intelligence and have been widely criticized as a pretext for war. The Salem Witch Trials in the United States A group of young girls in Salem Village claimed to be possessed by the devil and accused several local women of witchcraft. The ensuing trials led to the execution of 20 people, most of them women, and the imprisonment of many others. The trials are now seen as a cautionary tale about the danger of isolation, fear, and the power of false accusations. The Salem witch trials underscore the impact of mass hysteria and the importance of due process and rational legal proceedings. The Rwanda Genocide Hate Speech and Propaganda Long-standing ethnic tensions between Hutus and Tutsis were exacerbated by the assassination of President Habaramana. Hate speech and propaganda particularly through the radio station RTLM, incited Hutus to carry out mass killings of Tutsis. Over 800,000 Tutsis and moderate Hutus were killed in a span of 100 days in 1994. The genocide had devastating effects on Rwanda's social fabric and led to massive refugee crisis and regional instability. The Rwanda genocide demonstrates how media can be weaponized to incite violence and the catastrophic consequences of such situations. These situations illustrate the profound impact that falsehoods and hate speech can have, especially when propagated by influential figures or entities. The consequences range from social unrest and mass violence to prolong conflicts and humanitarian crises. It underscores the critical need for truth, accountability, and responsible communication, particularly by those in positions of power. The UK media machine is powerful and they are relentless in their campaign to villainize Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, and Prince Harry but more so Megan. With their innuendos, allegations, information from palace or secret sources that can never be confirmed or fact-checked, this produces a very dangerous environment. We have seen on this platform alone hundreds of channels dedicated to hating on Meghan Markle and Prince Harry and countless more on other social media platforms. This is not a one-day thing. It's not a two-day thing. This has been going on every single 
day for at least the last five years. The UK media machine is powerful and they are relentless in their campaign to villainize both the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex. This 24-hour campaign every single day for the last few years has consequences. And this is endorsed by the royal family, some may say. Because the argument is their silence is complicity of this sort of hate speech or endorsement of it, allegedly. Some may think that this is just innocent father, but it's not. Some may think, oh, well, they are rich and wealthy and they have titles, so who cares? But it matters. Hate speech matters. It doesn't take into consideration whether the person is of wealth, has a title, or it's a child from an inner city who's been bullied relentlessly. It all has consequences. This hate speech must stop. One particularly striking example that's been wildly reported is from 2019, when the Sun newspaper published an astonishing 25 articles about Meghan in a single day. This kind of saturation coverage, often with a negative slant, is not just unusual, it's potentially harmful and raises serious questions about media ethics and racial bias. It's important to note that The Sun is owned by Rupert Murdoch. Other analysis have shown that a significant percentage of articles about Megan contain negative sentiments, often focusing on trivial matters or employing coded language that carries racial undertones. This constant barrage of negative coverage stands in stark contrast to the more balanced or positive coverage typically given to other members of the royal family. The truth matters, and this hate campaign must stop. Welcome, this is Majesty's Sussex Report. I'm Antonio, and thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. So, how are you all doing? I hope you're doing great. I, yesterday, let me tell you. Yes, I'm going to tell you. So yesterday, I woke up not feeling all that great, and feeling very depleted, and sort of, I, I don't know what the word is is it uh sort of withdrawn and 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 sort of um if there's a word for it it's not nostalgia it's okay when the word comes to my brain i will let you know um but just just very lethargic that's the word lethargic and i i sort of just went back to bed went back to bed and i slept and slept and slept I had all these weird dreams, to be quite honest, too. Um, but they weren't nightmares. They were dreams because it, it wasn't all that bad, but they were weird. And um, get up, and then I, I said, okay. I got up on, you know, I woke up on time sort of to put um, an episode together of the podcast. And I started to do stuff and look at what's happening and blah, blah, blah. Look at um, my notifications. I lasted an hour trying to put some of the things together. And um, after an hour, I was just like, I was <laughs> laughed up. My eyes felt so heavy. 
And I was like, what is wrong with me? But I also felt uh, like I was going to get a cold. So I, I just thought, okay, you know what? Your body is talking to you. Um, listen to it. So I, I, I went back to bed and um, <laughs> woke up about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> so I've um, started to put today's episode together. We've got quite a lot to cover. I, I, want, I want to also say that you will see from this channel um, a sort of campaign that I've decided I, I'm going to do. And one of the things that I've noticed about people when you bring up Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, is the information that they've got is the information that you would get if you were to Google Harry and Meghan. Because of the algorithm, because there are many more channels dedicated to hatred, um, the information that is provided to people who don't really, I would say, somewhere in the middle or they're not involved in every day knowing what is going on in, in this sort of environment and world is information that they have either consciously or unconsciously observed. So if you're standing in the checkout line for at the supermarket and you see the magazines that are there, the tabloid magazines, or whether you are watching a news report, any, any sort of where you get flash of information, your brain actually registers that. It registers that flash of information. So for a lot of people who say, well, I, 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 don't, I don't listen to that nonsense or I don't read tabloid stuff. I don't, no, 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 no. And then you ask them, so what do you think about Harry and Meghan? Oh, I don't know. I, all I know is that she is trouble. She is trouble. I mean, Harry was doing so well. Everything was great. He had a good relationship with his brother and 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 uh kate and and then i don't know like you know she came in and just missed a mess gosh and the next question for me usually is oh, how how do you know that what, where did you get your information from and they'll say oh no 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 i don't i'm not involved in it i don't don't pay much attention to it but but you know like in the news and stuff you you you, you will hear and it was so often there's some scandal that that she's either dead or he, or something and it's astonishing to me i was speaking to someone a few months ago and the this 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 podcast came up because they, they were asking me about um what do i do as a hobby or or, or my my interest or stuff like that and i said okay here is my interest i've got a channel this is what i do and uh the person said to me oh, oh okay and their reaction, they, oh, okay, immediately made me go, hang on, there was, there was more here. So I said, what do you mean by, oh, okay? And the person kind of, you know, very polite. He said, no, 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 I don't mean anything. It's just, you know, it's interesting that, that you would have a YouTube channel on that particular topic and you're, you're supporting, like, the... You know, Megan and, and, and Harry, they're trying to bring down the monarchy. And immediately, and this is a person who is, who is, who is sort of not, not, not intensely would, would be involved in any of this stuff. I would, I, would, I would qualify them or classify them as sort of, sort of neutral, neutral ground. And I said, oh, well, that's interesting that you would say that. I said, would you mind if we have a conversation about this? I said, but I promise you, uh, we shouldn't go more than five to 10 minutes. I said, I would love to know what, what, what you know um, or what, what your assumptions are. And if you would allow me to sort of um, have, a, have a rebuttal. And I said, this is just me gathering information. And, and, and the person was very generous in, in saying, yeah, that's fine. So here was, here was, here was one of the questions. I said, why, why do you not? like megan and this was the answer i'm not joking the answer was i don't know there's something about her and i said i said okay 
what is that something? I said, have you ever thought what that something might be? And the answer was, well, you know, I'm not a big monarchist or anything, but, you know, everything was fine in that family. And then all of a sudden she sort of appeared and, you know, I was happy for Harry and everything seemed to be going fine. And then all of a sudden she just sort of like made a mess. And I thought, okay, all right. The interesting thing that I got from that conversation was here's a person that is pretty neutral, doesn't really watch a lot of any entertainment shows or is not particularly interested in royal life or what they do or anything like that, but understands monarchy, the structures and everything. And the information that this person had or, uh, or was, was very much the information that we have been hearing for the last five, six, seven years. And, you know, one, one could jump very quickly and be sort of accusatory or be like, oh, you don't know anything and all that. But I, I, I tempered my, 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 my response and we had a really wonderful conversation. And the way that conversation ended was this person said to me, holy, you've given me a lot to think about. And I said, well, I'm not, I'm not, my intention is not to convince you about anything. My, my intention is to provide you with facts. And I said, the facts are out there if anyone wants to actually find them. And I said, the interesting thing that I got from you is that you did not go looking for any of this at any point, but it's information that you've received unconsciously and an opinion that you hold that is completely a biased opinion that you that you gather it on a very unconscious way. So as I thought about that, I thought about all the other people that many a times, and I go back to my parents also that, that held a couple of few misinformation. Um, and I thought about what are the questions or the assumptions that these hate channels deploy all the time because it goes in cycles right it's, it's, it's the same things that they repeat over and over and over and over they're they're kind of stuck in that um hamster wheel kind of thing and they just take whatever um situation is happening now and they plug in narcissistic um failure to this unhappy marriage is breaking down so they have a particular amount of topics or themes that they plug into for any situation. And they just repeat the same thing, repeat and recycle, repeat and recycle, repeat and recycle. So it's, it's a good dosage of that has been provided. So I, I, I thought, listen, you know, we do, I think all of the Sussex um, um, positive channels, they've been doing such an amazing job. And this is why I am, I'm here. This, this, this is why I, 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 I said, you know, <laughs> be brave and, and be creative and, and, you know, open this channel and let's see what happens. You know, because they are, they, they, they are on it, right? I see every day and it makes me so happy, so happy. I see every single day people on, you know, um, formerly known as Twitter and on diff different platforms, like saying debunking these lies and debunking these sort of narratives. And it makes me so happy because there is something out there, but we all know that still the, 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 the ma magnaphone, is it, it's called a magnaphone? No, it's not a microphone is a, gosh, I'm having like, a megaphone, whatever. Uh, when you have an entire, most of it anyways, um, directly or indirectly plugging into a narrative, and that is I'm talking about the UK media machine, because even, you know, the conventional channels, 
whether it's the renowned BBC, they rely on these royal reporters, royal experts. I mean, look at Hugo. Hugo the, the other day. I, I'm, this, is, this is a man that is a historian and a biographer. And the things that he was saying, and that is why I did the episode on, on a response to what he was saying, it's easily disproved. And the assumptions by which he was making these, these sort of broad um, commentary was awful. But if my mother was watching this, my father, they would believe him. They honestly would. Because there he is, right? When you are, when you are of a certain, um, you know, vintage, people tend to take you a little bit more seriously, right? And when you have royal historian and bibliographer in your title, it commands a certain level of truth telling and for him to just categorically from beginning to end of that interview just spew nonsense was not surprising to me but but just disappointing so i'm coming back to the campaign i'm getting there <laughs> the campaign and you will see this, is about, I started it already um, on, on shorts. I had, I think, either two or three videos that were about, you know, here is what the, 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 the UK press have said. Here is actually the fact. Here's what they've said. Here's the fact, right? Um, and I want also in this, this episode, what I'm trying to do and in, in, in the intro was to show what falsehoods right? Propaganda, lies, innuendos, what they can do. Now, any layman person could say, oh, Antonio, you're just exaggerating. Like these are just, it's the same thing when, when we talk about mental health. When we talk about mental health and people say, oh, well, they're rich, who cares? Oh, what? what? She had some, what? A breakdown? Oh, come on. She lives in a castle, in a palace. She has all these things. Oh, give me a break. So let me understand that argument. So because they live in a castle or a palace or they're wealthy or they drive a, a, a very expensive car or they go to private school or something to that sort, do we then reduce their humanity? Do we take away parts of their humanity? Because mental health affects us all, all, everyone across the board, all of us, it affects us all. It, it doesn't care about color, it doesn't care about race, it doesn't care about nationality, it doesn't care about whether you were born in a manger or you were born in the most expensive clinic in the world, it doesn't matter. Mental health affects us all, same as diseases, right? So this idea that, because I've heard this also, Oh, well, why, why should we care about that? Why should you care? When will you care? When something awful happens? And then people say, oh, I didn't know that was happening. Oh my gosh, I, what? 25 articles in one day? All about negative stuff about, oh, that, that, that's a lot, isn't it? I didn't know. I see, I thought that, yeah, you thought. This stuff, and I've said this from the very beginning, when, when I started this channel, it all intersects. It all intersects. It all is being done to put these two people as examples and to ruin them, to bring them down. And I will dare to say, allegedly, to, to, to create such environment that they do not in any shape or form succeed, or there is that drumbeat 
and you get the wrong person, right, with a mentality of a certain way going into the bushes, showing up in Montecito for whatever reason, if you can all understand what I'm trying to say here without saying it. Because we also know about politically this is being done. We know about the fellow that showed up at a pizza parlor with ammunition looking for this underground place where, quote unquote, Democrats or certain people go to do harm to certain things, right? The guy showed up with ammunition, ready to go into battle, thinking that he's rescuing. So this type of speech, this type of hateful speech, innuendos, allegations, it all matters. And these people have been doing it for over five years, continuously, nonstop, nonstop, continuously. And if you think that that does not seep into a person's subconsciousness, and if you think it doesn't breed more hate, then, you know, <laughs> we, we've, we've, we've got to talk. So I fully understand also, and, and some of you may not like what I'm going to say next. I fully understand disengagement, right? I get it because I get sick and tired also of reading the same thing, hearing the same thing. And I too want a place that I can go to, come to, and we can have a good time. We can celebrate in the accomplishments and we can continue to support good in this world. I do think also, and I've said this before, that we do have to allow a certain amount of space where we have conversations. Whether the conversation goes somewhere or not, we should still have it. It's sort of like, and I'm going to get a little bit religious here. For me, it's fascinating when people talk about what, a, you know, let's say the gospel, right? And how, who, who are you preaching to? Are you preaching to the disenfranchised? Are you preaching to the person who has to walk the streets to make a living, if you know what I mean? Are you opening the doors of these, these mega churches and, 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 and cathedrals? Are, are, are you serving the poor? Because what do you expect if you're not doing any of that? What do you expect when someone stands on a pulpit and half of their speech is hate? Hate against this, hate against that, hate against someone's identity, hate against you know, someone identifying as this, hate against someone who, decide, who, who they naturally decide to love. You know, we live in a very complex society, complex world, but at the same time, I don't think it's that complex. You know, there's that simple saying, live and let live, don't do harm. I, 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 I so many times I'm fascinated and I've got it, I've gotten it wrong ever so often. And I've asked, I said, oh, sorry, I got that wrong immediately. If someone comes into my space, in my environment and they say, hey, my name is Peter. I'll call him Peter. I'll say, okay. That's, that, that's, that's your name. That's the way you want to be called. I'm not going to say, no, 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 no. People like you look more like a Mark. So I'm going to call you Mark because people like you, traditionally, we've been calling you Mark. Why? It doesn't, it doesn't take away anything from me, from who I am. Right? So... Sometimes I think we need to venture in. I'm not telling anyone to go on these people's channels or anything because I don't go there. Don't go it. Don't touch it. Don't do anything because it literally <laughs> it will do some mental harm to yourself because the things that these people spew and say is just horrible. I'm just thinking about 
the, like the person I spoke with, right? That that she she she's not at any part of any end a person who's like a hateful person or racist or any of that. It was just information that seeped into her head unconsciously. And armed with the, the proper information, she went, oh, really? And now she, you know, she checks that my channel levels so often, which is great. <laughs> She'll message me once in a while and go, hey, I just checked with your last episode. That was really good. Or sometimes she'll, she'll go, okay, I didn't quite get this part. How, uh, I was like, okay, when are you available? I'll give you, I'll give you a quick call. So it, it, is, it is my own little campaign, right? Stop the hate or stop hating Meghan Markle um, that I just want to make you folks aware of, okay? So you will see that um, in episodes to come. Uh, I'll dedicate a little bit of space for, for it. This has been a long intro talk. Oof. And we have so much more to cover. <laughs> okay. Watching you walk my way I could just stop and stare for days All of my dreams come true Every day that I'm with you I can't believe I can't believe You're Right way. 
tensions building All around you can feel it in the air It's more than a feeling A new reality everywhere I look and see the signs of the times Yeah it's coming but they're all in denial Everything you know it's all about to change See the sky crack and it rains down flames Oh man they ain't ready for it This is something that they can't ignore Coming down like a meteor This is more than a game You better get ready Shock the world Shock the world This is more than a game You better get ready Go ahead, get ready Shock the world Shock the world How do we say thank you to Lee Morgan? Those, those, oh, they are just amazing. It's absolutely beautiful. I kept thinking, um, when am I gonna show it to you folks? Because all my other colleagues were were showing them, and I thought, oh, by the time I get to them and show these pictures, it's going to be like wah wah. We saw it already, Antonio. You're late. Wah wah. <laughs> Like, okay, great. So I hope you enjoy my, my, I don't know, creative way of presenting it to you folks. So I wanted it to, I don't know, refresh a little bit and present it in a different way. So hopefully you um, enjoyed it. I love the aesthetic of um, Lee Morgan. I, you know, on his website, the way he has the, um, the photographs and stuff, his whole aesthetics and concepts and stuff is just right up my alley. I think that's what that's what they say, right? Right up your alley. This sounds weird saying it. Right up your alley. <laughs> Maybe my mind is somewhere else. Um, all right. So I think I've made a decision that this is going to be a two-parter. So you'll have this in the morning. And then I will, well, depending on where you are in the world, <laughs> um, you'll have the first part and you'll have the second part later. Because uh, I keep I keep promising, I keep saying, oh, I'm going to get to comments, I'm going to get to comments. What, it's been two weeks and I haven't gotten to comments yet, or a week and a half, I think. I'm not sure. I am I'm losing time. Uh, but I wanted to just quickly get some of the um, stuff that is happening, as you may have already know. Uh, ITV, we oui, we oui, Monsieur ITV is doing a documentary, and part of that documentary, um, Prince Harry, Hugh uh, Hugh Grant, Charlotte Church, and uh, uh, a lot of other people are going to be featured. So, uh, 
Prince Harry and Hugh Grant will feature in an ITV documentary titled Tabloids on Trial, focusing on ongoing legal battles and their involvement in the phone hacking scandal. Prince Harry alleges he was targeted by journalists and private investigators working for news group newspapers, NGN titles, The Sun, and the now defunct News of the World. However, in May, a London judge ruled that he could not expand his privacy lawsuit to include al um, allegations against media mogul Rupert Murdoch and presenter Pierce Morgan. In 2011, it was revealed that some of Britain's top celebrities and public figures were victim of phone tapping and property bugging by leading newspapers. While NGN has denied any legal activities at the Sun, Justice Timothy Fancourt ruled in December in favor of Prince Harry against Mirror Group newspapers, highlighting that phone hacking was widespread and habitual at the Daily Mirror. The documentary will also feature other victims, including Hugh Grant, ex-soccer player Paul Gasney, and singer-songwriter Charlotte Church. ITV News, Rebecca Berry will conduct a major interview with Prince Harry, who aims to expose the illegal tactics of Britain's tabloid press. The program will air on ITV1 and ITVX on Thursday, July 25th. So we will all be watching. Um, that's a summary from The Hollywood Reporter. Uh, so guess who else is doing a documentary? Want to guess? Anyone else wants to guess? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be on ITV also. Do I have any... Do okay. Oh, no. Just realized. <laughs> The mic was off. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The mic was off. Um, I'll continue. And let me see what if 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 the system recorded anything anyways. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, did I hear someone say Prince William? Yes, that would be right. So Prince William also is doing a documentary with ITV on um homelessness the um the project that um he is he is tackling so i i hope we get to see what exactly his plans are and how will he be tackling that uh i i was watching someone the other day and or was it yesterday and he was saying that and i haven't looked into it so i'm just Spule in here something which I shouldn't do. I should look into it then come to you folks, but I just want to tell you about it. That the um, royal family from the Netherlands, they actually open some of their properties or properties that they've got um, for um, housing or homelessness and stuff like that. So they, they do utilize the um, some of the property for to, to, to do to do some to do some good you know I I think Britain should really look at what some of the other royal houses in Europe have done to be more modern inclusive and all of that it's I think in the UK the royal family has gotten away with so much for so long and that whole media um, conglomerate and, and machinery that, that, that is behind them, that creates these stories and conflicts and everything else and keeps the nation entertained or not, I'm not sure, but um, keeps them in the position that, that they're in, um, right, has allowed them to not have to change, not have to modernize. It's, when you think about it though, when, if, if, if you take a few steps back and you think about a hundred million pounds, and that is just, it's not even, it's more than that basically, that every year goes to goes to them 
and they already have their own private wealth, plus the nation gives, 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 gives them over 100 million pounds, to do what exactly? I know people keep saying, well, they work. What is work? Define work for me. Because as, as what's her name? Gosh, Baron plays her ever so often when she was on Loose, Loose Women. And she goes, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Is her name Stacy? For some reason, I have Stacy in my head. But I don't get it either, Stacy, if that's, if that's her name. Because I would do the same. I would, I would work. I would be working. I would be the most, most hardworking royal. Because if all I need to do is get up, put on some fancy clothes, be driven somewhere, cut a ribbon, chat with some people, Right, shake some hands, smile, smile, and get back in 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 my in my, in my chauffeur car, go back to the castle at the, pa- the palace, and hang out for the rest of the day. Now, it wouldn't work for me because I'm a visible minority. So, they would like do all the crap they were doing to Megan. They would start doing it to me. <laughs> right? They'd be like, "Let's get him. <laughs> Let's start saying that he's this, he's that, he's that, and the other." So I guess my life wouldn't be easy. They would make it really hard. So that whole fantasy, you know, that some people have that it was so easy. All you would do is do like what in a Disney movie, in fact, the fantasy of it all. It's not that way as we come to realize. So yes, the Prince of Wales also will be doing um, a documentary about homelessness on ITV. And um, guess who showed up at Wilbur? Like sometimes I can't. I just can't say it. Ah, I I just cannot pronounce certain things no matter how much I practice. Sometimes I'll tell you folks what I do. Sometimes so I'll have the computer read the word, and I'll listen and I'll I'll sort of repeat it, and I'll repeat it and I'll repeat it, and then once I think I've got it, and then I start to say my thing. And I realized I don't got it. Like Queen Camilla, all right, surprised um, a few folks. I don't know who, but she surprised a few folks and showed up at Wimbledon. Wimbledon. (laughs) You see, I had the computer like repeat that. Wimbledon. Wimbledon. And you see, once, once my brain registers that I can't pronounce it, then it makes it worse, like worse. So I just have to leave it. Camilla showed up yesterday at like the tennis thing. Okay, great. And we still don't know if Katie's going to show up or not. According to Sal- um, Kaiser on uh, Salavici, she's, uh, they said that, um, quote unquote, that um, Prince William has to authorize whether she goes or doesn't go. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? <laughs> And congratulations to England. So head into the Euro finals. Um, substitute Ollie Watkins scored a stoppage time winner um, to send England um, deservingly through to their second consecutive European champion final on Wednesday as they finally turn on the style to beat the Netherlands 2 1 on a memorable night in Dortmund. So it's going to be England versus Spain. Buena suerte, good luck, and may the best person, oh, what does is, what is RuPaul say? And may the best something wins. And may the best, uh, folks. <laughs> you see, I get spontaneous as I, I say these things and I always don't know the right phrase. Always. And may the best uh, lip sync for your life. And may, okay, forget it. Forget it. Okay. And that article in Vulture, The Disappearing Timeline of Rose Henry. Listen, it's a long article. I've read it. And I will summarize it as best as I can um, and bring it to you in the next podcast, okay? So 
the best that I can. <laughs> because I was like, this is what happens to me. I read things and I was like, oh, that's really good. Okay, put this down. And I, oh no, that's good too. And then it's, no, I need to, I need to include this too. And then I look at the stuff and I'm like, well, I've included like everything. This is not a summary. This is my <laughs> entire article. So anyways, I will be bringing that to you also um, on in part two. That will do. Oh, well, what I forgot to say is that we might see, um, not like anyone here cares, but we might see Prince William at, in Berlin for the uh, football match. Um, he couldn't show up for the women, but I guess he'll show up for the men. I'm not, I'm not, folks, stop it. Stop it. I'm not implying anything. Gosh, you people. Ah, oh, even if, like, none of our business. Stop it. Anyways, um, what's, what's next? What else? What else? Um, you know what? I'm going to stop it here. Yes, I'm going to stop it here and uh, take a break and then start preparing for this afternoon. Are we excited to see what's going to be happening later today? Um, I saw some, some stuff with Serena. Serena, but she looks amazing and break a leg girl you're gonna do fantastic um because i love her she's great you know what i was thinking <laughs> i know i said i was gonna let you folks go but you know what i was thinking the other day if i were the producer of the show here's what i would do i would actually have a lot of the folks from the invictus games and i mean like the veterans have them actually come out on stage like just a whole lot of them and have an intro clip of people speaking about what it's meant for them to have the Invictus Games so sort of like a story of it and in different countries and really also in that reel or highlight show the service of Prince Harry, where the idea came from, you know, the work that he's put into it, and how close it is to his heart. Because I was thinking this, um, as I was thinking all of this, if I were the producer. You know, we have veterans who go and they serve one term or two terms or three, but even serving one term, um, when they come back, many of them have PTSD. Many of them still, they struggle with the things that they had to do or that they saw. And, and I, I mean, I was thinking about Prince Harry and he's gone in twice. He served twice um, on the front lines. He piloted that Apache helicopter and as as they were saying like that Apache helicopter is like prime target because it's like they they're, they're I don't know like 10 times more danger um, in the helicopter because it's it's in the air and uh, a, a projectile or whatever can from, from surface to air can can knock knock them out uh, so he's done that twice I'm sure the things that he's seen and he knows he hasn't, you know, told everything. I think about his training and the things that they put them through during the training. I think about how the British media has been abusing him since he was 12 or even younger. I think about his own family, his father, his brother. Oh, I'm going to get emotional. Can I get through a podcast and not get emotional? Holy mama. Me. Um, he finds this woman that is just golden. She not only checks everything on his list, like she, she burns the list up, you know? 
more than he expected. And he sees that they start to like treat her a certain way in the British media and he tries to tackle it immediately, right? He's like, no, no, I'm not going to have any of this crap. He goes to his family and they give him that cockamamie story about, well, our women have to go through it. What's so special about your woman? Freaking sexist and chauvinistic and just disgusting. But Harry being Harry, he's like, no. He, 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 he issues that statement and they go on the tour um, in, in the Pacific and he sees how well she's being received. Not only that, how well she's managing it. And I'm sure, you know, he wouldn't have married her if he didn't already like super loved her. But seeing her in that environment and seeing the way in which people appreciated and how she was handled, he must have gone, oh my gosh, like how could, what did I do to deserve this woman? Like, this is amazing, right? Then they come back. And all that amazingness, all that proud that he was, all that just crumbled because of ego, envy, and all that toxicity in his family, in the British media. And they just start harassing and abusing his wife back, forth, and center, and then doing the same to him also, to the point that he doesn't feel safe. He w needs to protect his wife. He starts to like see the same story repeating itself. Now, that man is a strong man. Strong man and a strong woman. Because the things that they have had to deal with, the things they've had to handle, and that's just the stuff that we kind of know, the surfacey stuff. I can't fathom the stuff that's below the iceberg. You know, we, we only see, see the top, the peak of it. What's underneath? You know, he, he had the intelligence, the emotional intelligence to know I need to make sure that my brain is okay. I need to make sure I'm going to go into therapy. Excuse me. And part of that was due to Megan. When they had that situation, when, when she was, um, she was making, I think, dinner for them and he had a little bit too much to drink or something. And he said, whatever he said to her. And she just, she's like, nope. You're not talking to me like that. And just, just, she just turned everything off and, and they had the conversation and she said, you know, you, you need to speak to someone. You need, you need to deal with this stuff. You can't keep pushing it, pushing it away because it's manifesting itself in different ways. And if I'm going to be with you, right, you have to be a whole person. A well, a well whole person. And thank God for that because imagine, imagine if he was not like had started trying to speak to someone and so on. Like, I don't know if he would have had the tools enough to start to also handle, you know, all the other stuff that just came towards them, the strength that he's got and, and he's got a, a, a strong, powerful woman went with him. They are truly partners. I'm so proud of both of them. So proud. <sighs> okay, folks. Love you. Thank you so much. I will see you later today. Okay, have a wonderful day, evening, afternoon, midnight, wherever you are. And all my beautiful people on the moon. Um, <laughs> you, you people are going, <laughs> you folks are going, did he just say people on the moon? What's wrong with him? Um, 
when I was a kid, I used to say, I used to write and I used to say, um, uh, little man in the moon. Hey, little man in the moon. What's happening? What's going on? And I was from, um, Le Petit Prince, the little prince that used to live, um, that, that, um, that story from, gosh, I forgot the French author. Um, so I, I read that and my imagination used to take me there and I used to pretend that he still lived on somewhere in the moon and I would have these conversations with the little prince on the moon. All right. Au revoir. I will speak with you later. Bye-bye.